Hello everybody. So um, today I've been wanting to do this video for a while. Um, I want to do a video on how to, how to use the constant speed prop uh, in actual flight. And I wanted to do this because when I was, uh, well before I got my license and shortly after I got my license, I was interested in doing the complex endorsement to, to get the constant speed prop and the retractable gear. And there just wasn't a lot of information out there. I mean, you could find out how a constant speed prop works. You can kind of read some things when you use it. But I, I wanted to do something where you can actually see it in use. So in today's video, I'm going to do a little flying around the patch here uh, and, and just kind of demonstrate the use of the, of the prop. It, it's actually quite simple. Um, it, it's a lot, uh, a lot easier than you would think. But um, we talked uh, briefly uh, before about how how the, the pitch of the prop changes to maintain a set RPM and, and that's what the blue lever is for. Um, so it's a little different than when you're doing just a, a fixed prop trainer like a 172 or, or a, a Warrior or something like that. Um, in those you set your cruise power based on um, engine RPM and, and altitude uh, predominantly. Um, so and, and the RPM obviously changes because of loading on the, on the prop and, and engine power and it just kind of uh, you know, it's relatively simplified. In, in a constant speed prop, basically that prop, the pitch is, is always being adjusted by the hydraulic uh, um, uh, regulator so that the, the prop always spins at the RPM you set with the blue lever. Um, and th uh, that's important because there's certain times you want a flatter pitch so it's easier to spin the prop, there's less load, and that's predominantly in takeoff um, and, and as you're landing to, uh, um, to prepare for a go around and, and also in climbs. And then in um, cruise, when you, once you get to altitude, you, you, want, you want actually a more aggressive pitch. So you, you, know, you turn down the RPM, it brings in a, a more aggressive pitch, you move more air uh, for less engine work, uh, just like a car with gears. So. Um, the way that you set your power in a constant speed uh, proper complex airplane is you'll see you have here, and I, I don't know if you can get a good shot of it, but this is the manifold pressure gauge, okay? Um, on the manifold pressure gauge, basically that's reading the pressure at the throttle plate, okay? If the throttle plate's wide open, it's going to read atmospheric pressure around 29 inches of mercury. As you close the throttle plate, obviously there's going to it, it's going to go uh, much lower, uh, theoretically to zero if the throttle plate is closed. Um, but that that's your manifold pressure. As you can see um, over here on the left side, on the top, you've got uh, inches of mercury, okay, from 10 till 35. And again, that's really just going to be 29 inches. As you can see, it's 29 here because the engine's off and that's the uh, atmospheric pressure. You use the tachometer along with the manifold pressure to set your power. And in the POH, there it lists various settings for different percentages of power depending on your manifold pressure and your propeller RPM. Um, so this is important to note. And you'll, you'll hear other wives' tales about over square and, and things, and that's really not um, accurate for, for something like this that's normally aspirated. That's really more predominant for, for turbocharged planes where you can get very high manifold pressures. But the, the over squared thing is, is they don't want you to run at a higher manifold pressure than your engine RPM. For instance, 29 inches of manifold pressure, if you could actually get that at sea level, let's say, um, and 2100 RPM because the 29 is much higher than the 21. The thought is you, you, you're loading the engine and, and giving it full throttle at the same time. It's hard on the engine. But again, you don't really have to worry about that with something like this. If it's turbocharged and you're developing 40 inches of manifold pressure, that, that's a little different story. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, we're going to do a flight and I'll demonstrate the use of this blue lever. But really, you're only changing it a few times in a standard flight. Cool and okay, and now you see... The pitch is all the way flat. Mixture is obviously full. Uh, I'm going to start my roll here. Airspeed's alive. And we're up. Stop. 
stop the wheels from rolling. Picking up the gear. And you can t I have not changed the prop setting from when I started rolling out here. So, and you won't. Um, Now some people will pull it in a little bit at this point, just to get it off the stops and get the governor to control the RPM. I just touched it. It's still 26. Uh, one two nine. Contact departure one one nine or point seven nineteen seven. One one nine or point seven for arrow one two nine or thanks. Through rapid departure arrow three three one two nine or through two thousand six hundred for three thousand. Arrow three three one two nine or Cedar Rapids departure radar contact turn left heading three six zero. 360 for arrow 129er. Okay, so they're kind of working me towards the uh, northwest practice area here. Now I'm almost at my cruising altitude, well, we'll call it cruising altitude in this case, of 3,000. So as soon as I get there, I'm going to level it off, and I'm going to let it accelerate without still having changed anything on the throttle, RPM, or mixture controls. Okay? Okay, we're at 3,000, I'm leveling it off. We're gonna accelerate, just for a few seconds here. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull back the throttle. Pull back the throttle, because I'm at 27 inches, which is way higher than where I wanna be for cruise. In this case, I'm gonna take it down to about 23 inches, okay? Okay, I set my throttle down to 23, still level. I'm gonna now pull the RPM down into my cruise configuration, and this plane with this prop, it's about 2300 RPM, so I'm going to go ahead and back off my RPM. Frontier 692, contact tower 118.7. 118.7, Frontier 692. We're at about 2300 RPM. Arrow 129er, turn left on course. Left on course, arrow 129er. So now I'll adjust my mixture as needed. And, I, and with my mixture, I, I'm going to lean it, a little lean a peak generally, um, especially if I'm not going anywhere in a hurry. Um, And there you have it. We're now in the cruise configuration with a constant speed prop. Remember, you don't touch anything on initial takeoff until you get to your cruise altitude. Level off, accelerate, pull back throttle first, your cruising power setting, then pull your RPM back to your power setting RPM second and adjust mixture as needed. And you do that because you don't want to load the engine. You don't want to be climbing firewall throttle 27 inches I was at there and pull back your RPM and just like bog that, that engine. You don't want to do that. So that's why you pull back the throttles first. Okay. The throttle to cruise power setting. And that's really it. And assuming I was, uh, I mean, I'm going to the practice area, assuming I was going somewhere and I was at my cruising altitude, 4,500, 5,500, something like that, um, then I'd be done, basically, until I got there or if I had to change altitude uh, on my way. Um, but that, it's really as simple as, as it is. But we're going to go ahead and once you get out there, um, we'll do some climbs, which is where you'll have to kind of redo that, and then we'll, when we uh, descend for landing, you, you do a little bit of the opposite. But really, that's that's all there is to it. I, I mean, things to note, um, in case of an emergency, if you have oil pressure, which is a big if, I mean, depending on what happened and why you're in a, having an emergency, you might not have oil pressure. Um, that constant speed prop governor is, is controlled by oil pressure. If you have it and you're in an emergency descent situation, uh, you're trying to glide, get optimum glide, you can pull this all the way down and get as much pitch in there as possible so it doesn't slow, slow you down. If you have a flat pitch and the engine's not driving the prop, it actually acts like a big air brake. I mean, it, it, they, they, they say if you do the math, um, the, the amount of drag that the prop adds is equivalent to the area, the surface area of that big disc as it's spinning, um, which obviously hurts your glide. Um, so 
if you have oil pressure in an emergency uh, gliding situation, you, you can pull this all the way back and uh, improve your aerodynamics. But, uh, you know, in those situations, you probably won't have oil pressure or enough. And um, also, it's, it's not going to make a huge difference because it's not fully feathering. Um, turbo props, you'll notice they're fully feathering, and, and some more complicated planes, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll go fully feathered. Even in an aggressive setting, you know, you're still, you know, like that. Okay, so I've been flying around a little bit, and uh, mainly been staying at one altitude. So this is the next uh, next thing. So I'm at my, my cruise settings here. Okay, I haven't really touched anything because I'm just cruising around at the same altitude. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to initiate a climb because I, I'm a little little low. And you might have to do this on a trip. You get turbulence or something, you, you might need to climb. So what you do with the constant speed prop, because you're in a cruise configuration, you have some uh, aggressive pitch in there um, for speed rather than uh, climb, uh, you don't want to load the engine. You don't want to firewall that throttle for the climb with that pitch in there. So anytime you're going to climb with a constant speed prop, the first thing you do is you start letting out some of that pitch. So if you start flattening the pitch, my tachometer is increasing here. You want to do it slowly. You want to let that uh, governor, the prop governor, do its job. Okay, so I'm a little, I'm about 25.50 right now on the RPM. You don't have to go all the way up. Um, you can keep it uh, under RPM control. Now that I'm at 25.50, 25.70 RPM, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to firewall that throttle to initiate a climb. Okay. So here I am, my manifold pressure has come up to about 26 inches. Here I'm broadcast 350 is 177 for 1. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm beginning my climb. I could actually bring in a little bit more pitch. Here I can cruise climb at 110 miles per hour in this plane. Okay, and then I've, I've already hit my 3500, so I'm going to level off. Now we are on the heading of 110. Engine 461, Cedar Rapids departure, radar contact, turn right here, Des Moines, climb maintain 10,000. I'm accelerating. Des Moines, 10,000, Legion, uh, 461. And now I'm going to pull back on that throttle, just like I did when I took off. I'm going to pull it back to, in this case, we'll do about 2,200, or sorry, 22 inches. And now I'm going to pull back that RPM. Slowly, again, you don't want to make major pitch changes. Quickly. Let the prop governor do its job. I'm slowly bringing it back to about 2,300 RPM, which is the cruise RPM for this prop. And I'm going to readjust my pitch because I'm starting to climb again. And then you adjust your mixture if need be. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make straight in for runway 13, finish off our trip here today. Um, so for this now, it's a little bit of the opposite. You don't have to worry about loading the prop or the engine. Uh, because we're, we're going down, we're putting the nose down. So you can actually uh, optimize your, your flight time uh, by taking advantage of your descent. And what I mean by that is I'm not going to change the power setting here, although it's already fairly low. Um, if anything, I'm going to actually have a little more power. I'm going to uh, go ahead and pull this RPM down. I'm going to go ahead and I'll take it to 2100 or, uh, or even less. And what I'm doing here is I'm not don't have to worry about loading the engine because, like I said, the nose is being pointed down. I'm going to pick up some significant speed, and I need to drop anyway because I'm I'm descending for for landing. Tower one two nine contact tower one one eight point seven. Tower one one eight point seven for air one two nine or thanks. Zero rapid tower arrow three three one two nine or making straight in for one three full stop west east. Arrow 33129, our Cedar Rapids Tower, runway 13, wind 120 at 11, gust 15, clear to land. Clear to land, 13, Harrow 129. A little bumpy here. So, I've got that aggressive pitch in. I'm relatively nose down, doing about 500 foot per minute descent, give or take. It's a little bumpy. Um, and the speed doesn't look all that impressive uh, at 119 knots or so, uh, but I'm directly into the teeth of the wind, and it's a gusty wind uh, directly ahead of me at about 15 or, or more knots. So I'm moving pretty good. I've been well over 160 knots in some cases uh, on, on a fast descent before. 
And um, this just helps you get down at a fast speed. You lost time when you were climbing, especially if you went high, so you can pick that up in the descent. And that's really what this is all about. Now, once I get down to pattern L2, which I'm getting close, I'm going to have to take this pitch out because as you're landing, you need to be at the flattest pitch setting possible in case you need to go around. You want that uh, prop to spin up quickly if you need to go around. And so really, any time you're near the airport, take off, landing, you're going to be at a flat uh, pitch setting. So I'm going to go ahead and increase my pitch here. I'm going to pull back some throttle just to slow down because I need to get my gear out. Don't mind that. Okay, so my gear's coming down. Once the gear are down, my sink rate is going to be quite fast in this arrow. So I'm going to need a little more throttle. I'm going to make sure my RPM is flat at this point as I increase throttle. Again, loading condition, right? I'm going to make sure my mixture's up as I get lower. I'm going to do my gumps check. Gas, gas. Under carriage. Mixture. Prop. I'm going to go with the flaps. Go with another notch. Had a lot of speed bad on my part. I should have bled that, but I was trying to demonstrate for you how you can get down fast. I'm only going to go two notches because we got a gusty wind. And there we have it. And at this point, you don't touch the lever. 